Hey guys, Michael Sherp here. Welcome to this third and final part of WordPress front-end developer tools. This final part includes one major part, which is WordPress deployment. Essentially, you'll be faced with this task over and over again. And if you're right now using FTP, you better check out that part because there's a bunch of really good tools and ideas that you can follow up and really make your life a lot easier. Also, we're going to quickly touch on the operating system you're using because the choice isn't as obvious as it may seem. All right. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So WordPress deploying essentially means you are very often finding yourself in a situation where you're pushing or pulling code to either a live site or a staging environment. And I mean, if you have never heard about WordPress deployment, then definitely put some time in here and figure out what the options are because FTPing into, into your server and pulling files is definitely not a good solution. It's way too slow. There's really cool things out there. My favorite solution right now is Grunt. Uh, it has a very simple command where I can push and pull files and push and pull my database and it takes a backup. Um, the only downside to the Grunt solution is there's no like revert type comment. So if, if there is something going wrong, I will have to manually come in and fix that. Uh, for the sites I manage in general, that's not a problem. If, if I do make a mistake and something goes wrong and they're down for five minutes, uh, bad luck, I guess. Um, the other alternative that I would, and it's on my to-do list essentially to learn is Capistrano. Essentially the similar commands, except that it would have a revert or go back. Uh, type comment that you can use and essentially would allow you to really if you do make a mistake almost immediately go back and I think uh, yeah it's definitely it seems like the superior solution to all the other ones then there are other like solutions if you don't want to invest too much time into learning something else like word move or git ftp also git is actually a very good solution to pull and push code to your server only thing you need to do is have SSH access. And then there is the very, let's just say primitive alternatives like using plugins. Uh, that's what I was doing when I started out. Actually, when I started out, I was just exporting the, the database and I was just moving my files via FTP. That's probably the most primitive way you can do it. Uh, the plugin solution is obviously a bit faster, but still, um, yeah, it's it it's slow, and as soon as you have to do something manually, that's a good that's a good indication that it's slow. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is the operating system, and I said that's actually your first choice. It's probably, in my opinion, actually your last because when you start out, you're just gonna start out coding in the current uh, operating system that you're in. If you're on a Mac, you probably are on a Mac, and if you're on Windows, you're on on Windows. And then at some point, once you start adding in tools, once you start using the command line a lot more, you realize, well, maybe this Windows thing isn't quite as good as I as I wish. And and what I very often found myself is is trying to get something to work on Windows, where it looked like my Mac was just able able to handle that without me any doing ever anything. So. And then comes the other point that if you ever go and try and find a tutorial on how to install SAS or how to, I don't know, a Sublime tutorial or whatever, all the developers always seem to use Macs. And there's a good reason for that because in my opinion, it's, it's just much better integrated and things just tend to work much faster and smoother than on Windows. I can't speak for any any Unix system because I don't really use one. I don't use Linux. So, but for me, the Mac has been really a, a huge time saver and everything is just so much faster. And if you ever start out with a Mac, make sure you check out an app called Alfred. That's essentially the search bar you see pop up in every in every video you see when people actually look for stuff. 
Okay, I hope I was able to give you a good tour and overview of the stuff you may want to check out. Obviously, that's a lot of things. I know if you're very new, a lot of the stuff will be new and it's going to send you on a huge journey. What I can recommend you is really just check out one. Try and incorporate it in your next project. Try to use it. And I know at the beginning it will seem like it may actually even slow you down. But what I can tell you is if you start using any of these tools, it, it will just make you faster over time. And at some point you won't even think about it and it will just be so automatic. Okay, this has been my presentation about uh, WordPress front-end development. You can find me over at Scherpf.com or follow me on Twitter with at Scherpf. Check out my Google Plus or my Facebook. This has been Michael Scherpf. I'll talk to you later. Bye.